fresh. Yes, folks, that's right. We are starting a new series. I teased this recently and it's finally time to get on with it. So what is Box Fresh all about? That is, for a start, the title of the series. It's basically about taking GW box art that I really, really love and reinterpreting it in my style. So the idea here is not to necessarily try to improve or beat it because I think those are very subjective terms and I don't really think it's in the spirit of the community to be trying to say, my painting's better than GW's. So what I instead want to do is try and put my spin on it, my flavor on it, show you what that same box art would look like if I'd have done it, not the person who they commissioned to do it. So we're going to be starting out with Sergeant Ripper Jackson, the current limited edition miniature that was supposed to be a store opening miniature and ended up instead being something that's available in all stores at the moment, but still for a limited time only. It's a fantastic miniature. I love Imperial Guard. I love Katachan. I love painting in all of these sort of drabs and mutes and, and the kind of colours that you associate with Guard. So we're going to have a good time with this. Let's get some footage on the screen for you to take a look at. Now, by the time I actually realised I needed to film this, because I'm an idiot, I already uh, had a lot of the Strachan green started to go down on this, but you can see here basically the jacket and the, and the combat trousers, I'm just starting to base coat with some Strachan green here. Nice and simple and straightforward. Right, next up I'm going to grab some Army Painter Military Shader and some Lamian Medium. Now, a lot of people don't realise these two things are compatible. They assume that for the Army Painter Shades you have to use the Army Painter Shade Medium. But actually it works fine with Lamian Medium, so whatever you've got, get it. And we're going to mix those two together to form a bit of a sort of thinned down Military Shader. We're going to get it painted over all of those green areas. What you're going to see once that's done is something a little bit like this. Right now I need to stop painting greens for a little while, we've got to start to handle some skin now. So we're going to deviate away from all of those greens for just a minute and we're going to start to concentrate on those flesh tones. We're going to start out with Reaper's Dark Highlights colour, which is intended as a highlight for dark skin, but we're going to use it as a base for Caucasian skin here. We're then going to build in some highlights with Suntan Flesh, and then as we start to get up to the really, really bright highlights, we'll start to just add in a little bit of white to that as well. I'm going to start pretty rough here, not really taking too much care to blend stuff together and then start to work backwards, blending things back down into the shadows. I always find that, especially with stuff like flesh tones, it works better to blend downwards towards the dark than it does to try and blend up towards the highlight. So just roughing in the highlights first and then blend them back down is a bit more effective. When it comes to highlighting skin, my methodology is very, very different to how you normally see it done in GW box art. They tend to go for a sort of flat approach with the GW box art and then put very subtle shading in and a lot of edge highlighting. I'm not really a fan of how that looks on skin. So I tend to try and go for more of a sort of volumetrically lit or, you know, have a fixed light source kind of pointing at it, work with that musculature, place those highlights in such a way as to really enhance the sculpt a bit. With this considered, you don't really need things like inks and washes and stuff like that for painting skin. I actually think in a lot of cases these are a bit of a bad idea because they can, especially on things like faces, make them look overly harsh. Just starting with a dark colour and working up to a light colour is going to give you a great skin tone and you're going to be able to have a lot more control over how you blend through the different colours. There's also a little bit of scar tissue here and there, so we're just going to grab some Caribou Crimson and dot that into that. Scar tissue is something that should be quite subtle, it shouldn't really glow. And again, in the box art, the scar tissue is its really quite red. It almost actually looks like fresh cuts. And uh, I wasn't super keen on that, so I wanted to more sort of change that towards my style, make that scar tissue a bit more subtle. Right, so now we can go back to those greens again, start to introduce some variants, get them shaded, get them highlighted, that kind of thing, get them looking really, really nice. I'm going to grab Strachan Green again, and I'm going to get some Death World Forest, and just do a bit of a tidy up first. Then, once these areas are tidied up, but before I finish them off, I want to add in the camo pattern shown in the box art. So for that, I'm going to use Steel Legion Drab and Rhinox Hide for the light and the dark areas of it. With that camo pattern now sorted, I can get on with finishing those green areas off now. So I'm going to shade down with some Agrax Earthshade and Lamia Medium mixed together. And then I'll highlight each area up with just its base colour mixed into some white. I need to keep this making sense with the skin. So I'm looking for that top-down highlighting instead of massing on the edge highlights. 
This should keep everything just making sense together, looking like a cohesive piece. Right, so that's the greens and the flesh done. Now I want to start to introduce some more colour into this piece. I'm going to get the red areas taken care of next so that we've got a bit of a pop. This is what produces the main sort of contrast against the green. So it's really important to have these red areas looking nice and bright and decent. For that red, I'm going to work up from corn red. I'm going to go into evil sun scarlet and I'm going to go into wild rider red. Now that we've got all of that nice contrast sorted out and looking lovely, what I now want to do is start to just tie everything together. So the next thing to target on the workup is all of the leather work. There's a lot of it, so let's get on with that. We'll base all of the leather with Mournfang Brown, and then we'll apply a shade of Agrax Earth Shade and highlight with successive mixes of Mournfang Brown and Iron Rack Skin. It's important here to note that we're going to be building up the highlights in that very scratchy way you often see me do. Despite the fact that the heavy metal team actually do this quite regularly for GW, for some reason in the box art of this miniature they've used all neat clean edge highlights for the leather work. I actually think the scratchy approach looks a lot more effective, it really adds a bit of visual interest to the leather, so that's what I'm going with. Okay, now I want to look at the metallics. So first of all for the silvers it's going to be the typical workup that you always see me doing, Vallejo Dark Aluminium shaded with Nuln Oil. It's a brilliant workup, it's tried and tested and it's always good. From there we're also going to use some Retributor Armour and Rakeland Flesh Shade for the golds. As I say, you've seen me do this a million times, I'm just going to base coat the areas in the relevant metallic, shade them with the relevant shade, and then here and there I might need to pick out a few highlights just by reiterating the base colour. This gives metals a bit of a more realistic look for me. I don't tend to like to push really bright highlights into metals because the reflectiveness of the paint kind of draws your attention to the edges anyway. So when you go too bright with them, it can actually make them look a little bit washed out and it's not really the look that I like to go for. Right, we're getting close to done with this now. We are gonna have quite a few little sort of fiddly tie up bits now, little bits of detail painting, you know, scribble onto parchments and all of the base and all of that sort of thing. So I'm probably gonna skip through the vast majority of that just because it's a lot of little processes to show you which would make this video really bloody long. One thing I do want to show you before we skip ahead though is the highlighting for the blacks. I've just been mixing some greys for this so there's no need for an exact recipe. What's important is instead of just edge highlighting the black as per the box art I really want to play with the volumes more getting all those top facing surfaces really nicely lit but then we are still going to use some edge highlights obviously to add some definition to everything so it's that kind of mix of both that helps give it you know more the look that I go for. I am so glad that I did decide to just skip over those last little extra detail parts. That base has got so many details on it and they're not particularly hard don't get me wrong but it took a really long time to paint that base. It was probably close to an hour just painting the base. That said our sergeant is now done, she is now finished, she is now looking badass so I think what we should probably do is do that Lazy Susan thing. I'm going to shut up and uh, give her a few spins on the Lazy Susan so that you can enjoy her. And then we'll have another chat in the wrap up. and let me know. At the time of recording this, this miniature is also for sale, so feel free to get a hold of me on uh, any of my social medias if you're interested in owning her and having her as part of your collection. She may well have gone by the time that you contact me, but it can't hurt to check, can it? I'd love to know if you want to see more of this kind of thing where I interpret GW box art through my style. I think it's a really interesting concept for a video series, and I think that it all give a bit more of an insight into sort of why I do things instead of just always focusing on how I do things.
things, which to me at least, I think is quite interesting. Don't forget, as always, if you liked this video, I would love it for you to click that like button and let me know, that always feels great. And of course, you can subscribe to the channel if you wanna make it easier for yourself to see what's going on with me, get notifications when I post new videos, that sort of thing. If you really like the content that I'm making over here and want to help support me as I go into making this my full-time job, I've got a Patreon as well. Tiers start from as little as a dollar a month and you can get some pretty cool benefits. There is a link in the description for that as well. So anyway, folks, I'm going to get myself out of here for now, but I really hope you enjoyed this new series as much as I enjoyed making it. It was really, really good fun for me to do something like this that's a lot more thought out, a lot more planned, and a lot more procedural. It's a very interesting thing for me, so I hope it was a very interesting thing for you. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone.